All right, so this lesson is about amine and amine. We'll look at properties of amines and amines, how to name them, what some of the reactions are. So first off, um, this diagram again. So at this point, uh, we've talked about everything on this picture, basically all the functional groups except thiol. So all that's left are amine and amine. These two are special because they are the only ones that we're going to talk about that will contain nitrogen. All the other ones have oxygen or something else, but no nitrogen. And nitrogen is special because it is able to make three bonds instead of two, like oxygen. So that adds another layer of complexity. Okay, so first of all, um, amine. What is an amine? Amine is just an organic compound that is related to ammonia in H3 such that um, the hydrogens are substituted for a carbon chain. You can have one, two, or three carbon chains on a nitrogen and you will be an amine. And that will determine whether you are primary, secondary, or tertiary amine. So as the pictures um, suggest on the bottom, ammonia is just NH3, nitrogen with three hydrogens, that's it. A primary amine, will be an ammonia with a hydrogen substituted for a carbon chain. Secondary, um, you have two alkyl groups, two carbon chains substituted in and one hydrogen. Tertiary, you lose all of your hydrogens and instead the nitrogen is bonded to three carbon chains. All right, so please make sure you can distinguish between three. All right, so um, some properties. Ammonia smells bad. Okay, I think a lot of you know that already. I don't know if you've ever smelled ammonia. That is extremely unpleasant. I've accidentally created ammonia once in the lab, and I got to say, that smelled bad for like a good 10 minutes. I was absolutely disgusted. I never did that reaction again. Examples of bad smells, including uh, rotten fish. If you actually smell the ammonia gas itself, it does smell like something is rotten. Um, it doesn't smell like anything that you actually come across on a daily basis. The best description would be a rotten egg that is amplified to like extreme levels. But a rotten fish does smell pretty bad. That fishy smell, you know, that, that I can't describe, but that repugnant attack on your nose, that's the ammonia. And urine... Um, I'm pretty sure you've all smelled urine. Just walk into a public washroom, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The sense of disgust you feel, the sharpness of the smell that goes into your nose. If you're smelling urine, uh, you're probably smelling the urea from the urine, and it has two amines on it. And uh, sperm has a particular smell as well. It is caused by this compound called spermine, which has a lot of amines on it. Okay, so all of these smell terrible because of the amine. So which is why we put lemon on our fish. The acid from the lemon would counteract the base that is the amine. All right, so how do you name an amine? Okay, this is quite complicated because it has a nitrogen. So hear me out. The nitrogen could have one, two, or three carbon chains on it. So you have to identify the longest one, all right? When you do identify the longest one, you need to number the carbons so that the nitrogen is on the smallest carbon. Okay, so far, that's common sense. You end the name with the suffix amine. Well, because it's an amine. Four is the weird part. You need to locate the branches on the nitrogen, all right? We've talked about branches on the parent chain. That's easy, just tell me the number. But on the nitrogen, you can also have branches now because nitrogen is able to make two additional bonds. If it happens to be on the nitrogen, you have to use N to tell me that it is on the nitrogen. All right, so let's actually do this example right here. The longest chain is the four carbon chain on the nitrogen, and that will be butin one amine Butin because it's four. One, because the nitrogen is found on carbon one. And you end the word with amine. Okay, without the one that is just butanamine, 
Make sure you have both A and N for the butane. The one is not redundant. You need the one because the nitrogen could be found on carbon two. All right, so please specify. All right, so let's identify the branches. That will be an ethyl group. Okay, ethyl two carbons sticking out of the nitrogen, so it is an N ethyl. And you also have an N methyl. Okay, the N acts like the number here. It's not on a specific carbon. It is on the nitrogen, so N. Putting it together alphabetically, you have N ethyl, N methyl, butyl one amine. Does that make sense? So the name sounds weird because it now has N. All right, so good luck. Um, I'll give you some time on these two. Take around a minute and I'll take them out. Okay, so for the first one, all you have to do is count the carbon chain. So you will go one, two, three, four, five, six, or a total of six carbons on that nitrogen, and that's it. Uh, the nitrogen doesn't have any other carbon chain, so hex and one amine. Hex and for the six, one because the amine is on carbon one, amine. All right, so the next one. See, the next one is tricky. The longest carbon chain is not three. I know what some of you are thinking. On the right side, that's a propyl with the methyl group. No. Okay, this is a butyl. It has four carbons. The nitrogen is on carbon two. It doesn't have to be on carbon one. So that's butyl two amine. And the other one will be the N-ethyl, just put this together. Have N-ethyl, butyl 2, amine. Okay, don't fall for that trap. Does that make sense? All right, so now it gets really tricky. The one on the top right corner, that one is easy, okay? We're gonna go through this together because uh, some of these are complicated. The top right corner, you have three different branches. Well, actually three identical branches. They're exactly the same. So it doesn't matter which one you choose. I'm gonna choose that one. I'm gonna name, I'll number them one and two. So there, that's ethanamine. You don't need to tell me the one this time because with ethane, you have two carbons. Of course, it's gonna be on carbon one. There's no way to be on carbon two. So that's redundant. So ethanamine is enough. So you have N-ethyl and N-ethyl. If you have two of the same groups, you can just combine them. You have NN diethyl ethanamine. Okay, just like how you would combine different uh, the same substituents on other naming compounds with just a comma to separate the two numbers. Well, the N in this case acts like that number. You would treat N as how you would treat a number. You separate them with a comma you separate N with another letter with a dash. Okay, so that's N and diethyl ethanamine. Bottom right corner. This one is a special one and has a special name, aniline. That's it. Just like phenol for a benzene with an OH, this is aniline. You just have to remember that name, okay? Given that this is aniline, what about the one on the left? Okay, that one is a tough one. How would you name that one? Okay, anyone want to take a guess? Well, not very talkative, this class. Nobody? Granted, this is a hard problem. The big clue is that the thing on the right is aniline. So if you observe carefully, you can tell that there is aniline on the one on the left as well. That thing, that's aniline, right? If that's aniline, all that's left are the two methyls. So that will be N-methyl and you just count the carbons on carbon three, you have another methyl. Okay, so then you will combine them together. You would have N3 
dimethyl aniline. Okay, again, the N is treated like a number here, and the N always goes first. All right, so that's how you name this compound, and that's quite complicated, I have to say, with the aniline, but you have to know that it is an aniline and just apply the methyls on top of that. All right, so let's move on to properties of amine. Okay, so amines have relatively high boiling and melting points compared to other hydrocarbons of the similar size. And they're very dissolvable. The reason for this is that the NH bond found in these amines are capable of hydrogen bonding. Okay, we learned that hydrogen bonding exists between NH, OH, and SH, all right? If you look at the boiling points, ammonia, is at negative 33 degrees Celsius. That is quite high of a boiling point for a tiny molecule like ammonia, right? Like methane is like negative 180 something. So negative 33 is pretty high because of the hydrogen bonding. Now, if you actually substitute a hydrogen and make a primary amine, the boiling points in the second picture jumps to minus six. Why did it increase? Well, you are still able to do hydrogen bonding. You still have NH bonds. But now, because you have an additional methyl group, you have more electrons, so stronger London force. Okay, so the stronger London force increased the boiling point. This pattern continues if you do another substitution. If you have a secondary amine, the boiling point now jumps to positive eight, okay? You're still able to do hydrogen bonding with the NH, but now having more electrons, stronger London force still, the boiling point goes up. If you look at the one on the right, tertiary amine, you switch the last hydrogen for an amine, sorry, for a methyl, the boiling point actually decreased. And the reason for that is that, well, now you have increased London forces, your hydrogen bonding is gone. Okay, you no longer have NH bonds, so you've lost the ability to do hydrogen bonding. So actually the net is a decrease. London force increases by a little, hydrogen bonding, having lost it, decreases by a lot. So actually you decreased in boiling point. Now notice, still, this has a higher boiling point than ammonia, which purely does hydrogen bonding. So this is one of the examples where London forces actually overcame the strength of hydrogen bonding. Well, I said before that London forces are cumulative, they add up, so if you have enough electrons, this will be strong enough to be stronger than the hydrogen bond. And NH is just the weakest of all hydrogen bonds, so in this case, a tertiary amine has a higher boiling point than ammonia. If you look at the table on the bottom of the page, on the left column, you have strictly hydrocarbons. Okay, in the middle column, you have amines, and the final column on the right, you have alcohols. And across the rows, you have the same number of carbons. So this is basically saying that hydrocarbons on the left column, they have low boiling points. All right, so the first one, you have basically CH3, CH3. That is ethane. Pretty low boiling point. Amine, however, if you switch the carbon for a nitrogen, because of the hydrogen bonding, boiling point goes up. However, if you switch the nitrogen for an oxygen, instead of having NH, you have OH, the boiling points go up by a lot. Okay, this is because not all hydrogen bonds are equal. The NH hydrogen bond is weaker than the OH hydrogen bond, because oxygen is more electronegative than nitrogen. Okay, that's the reason. So as a result, amines have a boiling point between hydrocarbons and the alcohols. Okay, so that makes sense, everyone. You need to be able to explain certain patterns that you observe in boiling points of various organic compounds. You have to explain the context of intermolecular forces and you know what functional groups are present. Okay, so how would you synthesize amines? 
you can make amines from ammonia. Okay, that's the base that you have. Ammonia is NH3. If you can somehow substitute one or more of those hydrogens for an alkyl group, then you've done it. You've created an amine. How can you do that? Well, you have ammonia and an alkyl halide. That is an alkyl group attached to a halogen. Alkanes are very stable. They're not going to react with the substitution very easily. So if you slap on a halogen, that becomes way more reactive. So you would have a substitution between the I from iodoethane and one of the hydrogens on ammonia. You will make HI. And as a result, the alkane group, the alkyl, will be attached to the nitrogen. You will produce a primary amine. So ethanamide will be produced plus HI. All right, I hope that's clear. It is a substitution reaction between an alkyl halide and ammonia that will get you a primary amine. You don't have to stop here. You can continue this reaction. If you have your primary amine and you further react with another alkyl halide, well, another hydrogen will be substituted. You would then have a secondary amine plus HI. Does that make sense? But why stop here? You can continue. You can take your secondary amine and you can react with another alkyl halide. So finally, all of your hydrogen has been replaced with an alkyl group. You have a tertiary amine plus HI. So actually in this whole reaction, you will make all three different types of amines, primary, secondary, and tertiary, because you will be at different stages of the reaction. So the final product will be a mixture of all three of them. So that's how you make amines from ammonia using alkyl halides. Okay, you need to know the reactions of amines. So example three asks you a question about that. So draw a structural diagram and write the IUPAC name for primary, secondary, and tertiary amines formed in the reaction between ammonia and one chloropropane. So I'll give you around a minute or two. Try to figure this out using what we just learned, and I'll take this up in a minute. All right, so for this one, you have to draw primary, secondary, and tertiary amines. So you will start with the ammonia. The one chloropropane is very easy to draw. Propane, three carbons, one chloro. We'll just slap on a chlorine on the first carbon. Plus the ammonia. So this will create propanamine. Okay. Plus HCl. You would then take your primary amine. You continue the reaction with the alkyl halide. And then you will make a secondary amine. All right, like that, plus HCl. Your secondary amine will have one hydrogen left over. You can take your secondary amine with, yet again, your alkyl halide. You will finally replace all of the hydrogens. You have this spider-looking thing, your tertiary amine, with basically three peripheral groups. Okay, I hope this is what you get. It's quite a simple question. You just have to familiarize yourself with the reaction between amines and an alkyl halide. So any questions so far? All right, so let's talk about the similarity between amides and esters. We just learned esters in the previous lesson. And esters are just carbon double bond O bonded to another oxygen. Amines are carbon double bond O bonded to, instead of oxygen, nitrogen. All right, and another key difference is that oxygen on an ester can have a carbon chain on it. Whereas amide, you can have zero, one, or two carbon chains. So it depends on how many you have. You have a different kind of amide. All right, so. The amide will therefore have a carbonyl group 
combined with an amine group, all right? But you have to, again, recognize this as one single thing, an amide. If you learn biology, in a protein, you have amino acids, right? And the bond that links different amino acids together are called peptide bonds. And a peptide bond is just carbon double bond O bonded to a nitrogen with hydrogens or something else. In this case, the amide linkage is a peptide bond. Okay, so proteins are basically just long chains of amides. How would you name amides? Well, in this example here, your amide has two alkyl groups on it. You could have three. So, well, in this case, you have two. So you have to identify all of your alkyl groups. Step two. You gotta figure out which one has the carbonyl group. Only one of them will have the to amide at the end because you're an amide. So that's a propyl with three carbons. That's an ethyl on the right side with two carbons. Because the propyl contains the double bond O, that will be your parent. So instead of propyl, it become propanamide, okay? The nitrogen side, you have the ethyl. Well, that doesn't change, except you have to tell me where the ethyl is. It's located on nitrogen, so that becomes N-ethyl. So then all you have to do is put it together. You have N-ethyl propanamide. Okay, you guys good? So I have here two pretty simple examples. I'll give you in a minute and I'll take this up shortly. All right, so the one on top is extremely simple. Um, you don't have any branches at all. So if you just count the carbons, you will have five. So that's pentan, pentanamide. You do not need to tell me it's on carbon one because for amides, well, if you think about it, what is an amide? Carbon double bond O with a nitrogen. Your carbon already has three bond with the oxygen and the nitrogen, so you're only able to make one additional bond. So you can only ever be on the end of a chain. You can never be in the middle. So if you're on the end of the chain, you're obviously carbon one. So you have to be carbon one. You do not need to tell me that it is on carbon one. So pentanamide is enough. The question on the bottom, the nitrogen has, well, three things sticking out of it, and none of them are hydrogen. You have an N-methyl, that would be an N-butyl, and your parent would be ethanamide. Okay, despite only having two carbons, that is the parent. We're not counting the length of the carbon chain. Okay, that's the parent because it has a carbonyl, double bond O. So because it's two carbons, so it's eth ethanamide. Putting it together, B before M, that would be N-butyl, N-methyl, ethanamide. Okay, so that's how you basically name amides. Two more examples. Um, I'll give you another minute, so I'll quickly take these up and we can move on. All right, so the first one, you have a propanamide because three carbons, that has the carbonyl and methyl, and methyl, simply put them together. You can combine the methyls. You will have NN dimethyl propanamide. For the one on the bottom, ethanamide is your parent again. That is the shortest of all of, all of them, but again, you're not counting the length. That one has carbonyl. That would be in butyl, four carbons, and propyl, B before P. So that would be N butyl, N propyl, ethanamide. Okay, so this will be the last little bit that we'll be doing on naming amides. Okay, make sure you know how this works. So now it's time to move on to how do you make amides? Well, to make an amide, 
you must combine an acid with an ammonia. This is similar to making esters. Okay, remember the last lesson we learned how to make esters from acid and alcohols. Okay, so basically instead of an alcohol, you just add an amine and you will make an amide. The equation below has ethanoic acid. Okay, the OH will be available for, from the ethanoic acid plus ammonia, NH3, one of the hydrogens, again, will become available. The OH and the H will join together to become water. And this carbon from the ethanoic acid that has the double bond O will now bond with the nitrogen to make ethanamide. Exactly how a peptide bond would form between two amino acids. All right, so that is how you make an amide. If you compare this to esterification, um, I have two equations on top of each other. One is making an amine, uh, sorry, amide. The other is making an ester. They're awfully similar, okay? You have butanoic acid as a start, your acid. If you add methanol, you will make methobutanoate, the ester. If you add methoamine, an amine, you will add, you will make n methobutanamide, an amide. And basically, all that's changed is instead of O, you have a nitrogen. And in your final product, instead of O, you will have the nitrogen. And everything else stays the same. You both make water. So these two are extremely similar, um, esters and amides. And hence, we have polyester and polyamide as fabrics, okay, because they're similar. All right, so example six. You're supposed to draw a diagram and write the name of an amide formed between the reaction of an acid, ethanoic acid, and the amine, N-methyl propan one amine. So this is kind of tricky because you have to draw these and especially N-methyl propan one amine, that's not easy to draw. So I'll give you around two minutes and I'll take this up. So I'll make sure you know how to do this one. All right, so this final example, you have to draw the diagram and write the name of this reaction. So firstly, you have to draw the diagram. Ethanoic acid is fairly simple to draw, two carbons, stomabonol and OH. The N-methylpropan-1 amide is a little bit difficult. N-methyl, you know that nitrogen has a methyl sticking out of it. Propan-1 amine, uh, amine, you have propan, that is three. One amine, you're on carbon one. All right, so that's the structure. Now, it doesn't have to look exactly like that. You could have rotated it or flipped it, doesn't matter, but something along that line. A nitrogen with a hydrogen with a methyl with a propyl, okay? What would they make? Well, the OH from the acid will disappear. Let me just circle that right here, this thing, along with the H from the nitrogen. That will disappear and make water. So now you connect the carbon double bond O with the nitrogen to form something like this, plus water. Okay, so that will be N-methyl N-propyl ethanamide. Notice that when I drew this, I flipped it a little bit. Um, notice that the methyl was pointing up in the reaction, but it pointed down in the product, that does not matter. Because in a single bond, you can rotate. I point it down because it looks prettier that way. It doesn't really matter. So that's how you would finish off this question. Make sure you know how to form an amide from an acid and an amine. All right, so this concludes the lesson. Uh, we learn about amines and amides in this class. Amines, basically substitutions on ammonia, and how you make that is just basically substitute alkyl halides with ammonia. Amides are made from a condensation reaction between a carboxylic acid and an amine. And we learned how to name amines and amide, and this is it for this class.